It should have a purpose. Every retrieve should have a purpose, and that's not to tire your dog out. There's lots of different ways to do retrieving. Retrieving is obviously go out, get it, and bring it back. But there's so many parts to the retrieve. One of, one of them is going out to get it. And very few dogs struggle with that. If I take this dummy and I spin it around, I just about had three or four dogs come out of their leash. So there's no issue with the idea of chasing something. If I threw it, you'd really see some action. So it's the idea is the idea that I, the thing that I see the most problems with is them going out and getting it and then bringing it back all the way. So one of the tricks that I like to do is if a dog hangs up on me and doesn't want to come back, he stops short. I don't. I try to encourage him to me. I might get down and encourage him to me. That just got him to her to want to come to me because that did it with her body language. I'm, sp I'm speaking to them. So why not? So that's one way. If they hang up and decide to play a little game of keep away with me, you know what I do with them? The last thing I do is go towards them. Just turn and leave. Because no one wants to be left alone. And then I go like this. And she can't help it. And neither can he. Because they all want to come. That's, that's like that. That's universal. Whatever country you're in, whatever language you speak, if you see someone do that and you want to be with them, you do it. Just like when you're in any country and someone goes like this, what do you do? You stop. Regardless of, every cop in the entire world tells a, a traffic thing to stop. We all do it. That's why we said stop when we want him to sit. So there's these different body language things that we can do. But the reason why we did some steadiness stuff before is because we like dogs that don't just break when you throw stuff. We showed it before. Here, here, here. It's real temp, it's very tempting to go get that dummy. But control and their behavior, the ability to call them off of something like that is real important, that steadiness. But if you, we, I showed it last time, there's no lack of drive in either one of these dogs, you're gonna see it. Some of you are gonna handle them. I'm gonna let, we're gonna let some people handle other dogs because I think this is like, not everybody here is gonna have a real smooth retrieve. That's okay. We're gonna, we'll see. If you have extreme concerns with it, just tell us, that's okay. But you're not gonna get to check out of this session because your dog's not doing it. What you're gonna do is, I think it's real empowering to feel what it's supposed to feel like. And that's, why, that's where we'll put one of these dogs in your hands. And I want you to walk, it's, sometimes it's heel work, like healing one of these dogs that just takes no effort can be really, can be really a nice, refreshing feeling and give you energy. We'll do the same thing with some retrieving. So there's a couple different types of retrieves. Marked retrieve, when I, I, I should have, marked would be they visually are seeing it. They're watching it. We don't use a lot of marks for multiple reasons, and then my dog doesn't become a very good marker, so I need to do it more. What we use a lot of is memories. Memories help build steady, quiet, patient dogs. So what a, me what a memory looks like is you heal the dog out, you drop the dummy, you turn around, you heal the dog back. Whatever distance you want. You turn back around, you get the dog set, you line the dog, which is nose, spine, tail. Whichever way they're pointing, that's the way they're gonna go. So a lot of dogs have a bad habit of cocking themselves to one side when they get in front of them. You can't send your dog on a retrieve out there if they're facing this way. So to correct it, we heal them, heal them, heal them, and you get to the point where there's a reason why all that heel work this morning is valuable. It's not just to take the dog for a walk. It's for setting up this retrieve. I tell the dog, heel, 
and I take a step forward, and where should heel position be? Left hand side or right hand side, shoulder to knee, facing forward. Because from that, I line out. There's a thousand ways to line. You can line with your left hand over, you can line with your right hand. There's American way does it, very formal this way. The kind of the continental way is this way. There's some people that say your feet should be square. There's some people that get right down and line up. I don't give it, I don't care how you do it. Whatever you do, do it consistently. Some of you are gonna have a way of doing it that I'm gonna say it would be better if you did it this way. Clint's got his own little style of delivery. I think there's a way that we can help him make it more effective. I know why he does it. Because if there's a little bit of hesitance with that steadiness, it's forcing him to send his dog in a certain way. So what do you do? Do you change the way you send or do you fix the steadiness? Do we take a cough drop or do we put a jacket on and not go out in the rain? Like that's the difference. So we're gonna fix the problem, not serve a symptom, okay? So to start out with, memories are very, very important to us. All of us use memories. Lots of memories, lots of memories, lots of memories. Because lots of memories make lots of steady dogs, lots of quiet dogs, lots of patient dogs. How many memories do you do? A couple. Okay, do you do a lot of marks? Okay, dog's real excited about the idea of a mark. I wouldn't be marking with that dog anymore. Zach, you and I talked about this earlier too. Okay. Mark, a lot of marks? Yeah. How come? Just didn't know any better. Sure, part of, it's, part of it's that. Some people are gonna say, because a memory requires good heel work, and that's hard to do, it is. That's why it's so valuable, because it's like a key. Heel work is a key that unlocks a lot of rooms in the retriever world. Not just in the field, but like in your house and in the park and all that stuff. So let's show, let's demonstrate. Why, uh, you, why you wanna demonstrate? Okay, let's demonstrate a simple, we call this a trailing memory. And the reason we do this is there's value in the idea of setting the dog up with a trail out and a trail back. Remember, this is not, yeah, use that, you can use that alley. So we use these mode strips. This is a real wide mode strip. That's a real narrow mode strip. That's where he's standing. The reason that I have this mode this way, and you guys, yeah, let's, you guys can stay right there. The reason I have this mode this way, I have an angle that goes into the woods. I have a, a line that goes straight. I have an angle that goes there. And then I have a nice wide runway here. So I can send a dog from right here, this is a little more advanced, but I can send a dog from here and I can put a dummy in that white, I can put a white dummy in that row, that row. If you notice, I mow to there and I could drop a dummy short or what I do is I go pitch one up and over and I make the dog push through cover because a lot of times dogs will go so far and then they'll hit a barrier. That, that's a way to help fight through that. But set up a simple trailing memory. Out, drop a dummy, I say no heel. Turn around, walk back. So go ahead and set it up, Wyatt, and I'll kind of narrate what you're doing. Huh? Care how far. I would go short and sweet. Today, we would not be making retrieves this time of the day. There's just, there's just no reason to, it's too hot. We're gonna do one retrieve in weather like this. I brought water intentionally. This is where you're gonna overheat a dog. This is a spot that you can make water retrieves. If you had to make retrieves on a day like today, you go into the water. The water is a nice spot to make retrieves because the water is really hard to run away in. Some of these dogs that are struggling, that might be a fix for that. If your dog runs off on a retrieve, we'll put them in the water and we'll put you in the water with them. And then that way that dog goes out can't help but pick it up. They're not gonna swim out to it and leave it. They turn around and you call them back to you and they're coming back to you. They can't get away. It's a great way to shape early retrieve. I, I used that with Spry years ago and that was how I got her to start retrieving to me. Went in the water and it's fun. Fun for her, fun for me. So Wyatt heals the dog out, pitches the dummy or drops the dummy, says no heel. What are you laughing about? I laughed because right as I threw it, she had a big old shake that she did and her head never fell. And what? She had a big old shake right as I threw it, so she didn't see it. 
Okay, so did you reset it? I didn't reset it, but I, I did a no heel on it. Okay, that, if, if that's the case, and you're doing this for the first time, you go pick, you go pick that dummy up and you, no heel, heel it off. Can't be wrong that way, you know what I'm saying? Now Wyatt, Wyatt's dog's done these a million times. Wyatt's dog can do them without knowing that there's a dummy there. But we gotta show you baby step one before we can show you baby step 12 because you'll have a lot between one and 11 that will, you'll lo will lose you. And I'll add a little delay here, but she's a little, she's kind of sporty in her, you know, she doesn't sit, she can, I can make her, but she's got her leg up, she's ready to go, that lets me know that she knows there's something out there. So, it's kind of when you know your dog. It's body language. Now, you, he added another big challenge. That dog had to cross a road to get to that. I wouldn't even think about having you guys do that. With the dog that's struggling to, or first doing this, I mean, we're, doing, we're not crossing roads, we're not crossing any type of barrier. We're going down and back, down and back. Here, here, now, this is my fault, because she's got a sloppy delivery right now. Here. Really? No. Here. Come. 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 Here. Now, and I knew that. Now, when we talk about retrieve, think about what a retrieve is. It's going out and coming back. And there's a lot of things that can happen from the very first part of that to the very last part of that. And there, those are all parts and pieces that we build individually and then piece together in the end. And so he just talked about delivery and he's, I've seen it now the last couple of weeks, the last couple of times we've trained together, he's even said it, you know what? I really gotta get back to the table and just polish this back up. And he hasn't and that's okay. But he also is reminded of it always at the worst times. So, but you know what? That's important to see, that's okay. So how did he deal with it? Dog came back to him, finally he got the dog back to him. He didn't snag that thing away from him. You son of a gun. He took it from her, he gave it back, he took a couple steps back, he said, here. He got, he, he got a delivery out of it, even though the delivery didn't come the first time, the first go around. So delivery is very important and delivery can make your retrieving be miserable if it doesn't happen. One little trick is the water. Go in the water, because they sit down. They can't get away. They have a tendency to always hold on to it. Meet, get right in the water with them. Let them swim right back to you. Do that. One thing I think is you gotta be careful about retrieving is it should have a purpose. Every retrieve should have a purpose, and that's not to tire your dog out. That's what I call meaningless retrieves. That creates dogs that are real anxious about getting the next one. You'll notice my dogs aren't too hyped up about the idea of this retrieve, but when I do make a retrieve with them, you will see it turns on. It's because they just get, every retrieve they get has some meaning to it. There's some value in us getting it. Mm -hmm.